Hi everybody, it is still uh, September 15, it is 11.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Umberto, they are saying, is going to uh, intensify into a hurricane later on tonight. Alrighty then, well, when you see Umberto on radar, you will think to yourself, how is that even possible? So at 9.35 p.m. tonight, uh, it may impact Bermuda by the middle of the week, uh, and it's becoming a Category 1 hurricane by Sunday night, a Category 2 by Tuesday. It is expected to move further or farther east by the middle of the week, and it will likely remain a hurricane. It's moving slowly to the north. And fortunately, the Bahamas didn't get much. Uh, there's a Gulf disturbance, an upper level area of low pressure has produced several showers and storms in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Alrighty. And there is a Central Atlantic wave Another tropical wave is located southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands and it's producing showers and storms. It may gradually develop into a tropical depression by the early next week as it moves westward across the tropical Atlantic. Hmm, storm, storm, storms. Well, we're in the heart of the hurricane season. So, uh, well, Let's just listen to this guy, just, just for a few minutes. Satellite view, and you can see that upper level low spinning here, but back in here, we have a little trough of low pressure. That's at the surface. This is in the upper atmosphere. Uh, this little trough back here is into uh, the surface. So hurricane centers watching this, they really don't give it much of a chance of development, only 10 to 20%. Uh, earlier today, they had 10 to 30%. Uh, it's going to be moving pretty quickly towards the Texas coastline, so it really doesn't have much time to develop, and uh, none of the computer models are showing really much of, uh, with the development of this thing. But uh, we'll be watching it, and we'll be adding some more moisture into our atmosphere as we head towards next week, and that will increase our rain chances, and we'll be taking a look at that in a seven-day. Tropical storm Umberto, winds are at 60 miles an hour, moving to the north and northwest at about 6. Looks like the track's going to keep it away from Florida and the entire southeastern U.S., uh, they are expecting it to become a hurricane maybe uh, later on tomorrow, and then it spins back out into the Atlantic. So great news. It will not be making a, not only a direct effect, but not even getting that close towards the southeastern U.S. So good uh, news for all those folks there. It's fine. That's right, because it's making a sharp, a sharp right-hand turn. A sharp right-hand turn. Hmm. All righty then. Um... This is the hurricane. This is the tropical depression. Really? Well, I don't know what to say. I do not know what to say at all. Let's take a look at the radar earlier today. Here, let's do uh, today at approximately um, What's 18? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this is what Umberto looked like. Well, it's big, clearly. Very, very big. It's got a lot of, uh, well, what, bands? Um, the outer, the outer uh, bands of Umberto that Wow. Well, they swing in to North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, into Florida. Whoa, man. Way into Florida. Actually heading right into the Gulf Coast. All right. Uh, how about at 3-ish Eastern Standard Time? There it is. It's, it's definitely got Florida. Well, did you get much rain, Floridians? You know, 
watching this, it's really, I don't know. Wow, did you have quite an early, very early morning, 2 a.m. No, I'm sorry, that's, uh, I read that wrong. 9.15, 14.02, so 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Frequencies blasting away. South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, into Minnesota. Very strange radar lately. Seeing a lot of very strange uh, anomalies. Are they anomalies? You have to stop saying anomaly when things happen repeatedly. So let's just look at Umberto. All right. This was at 2 p.m. today. I guess maybe they were trying to pull it together or something. Or something. Do something with it. My God. And this was the supposed tropical storm. This was at 2.36 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Alrighty. Well, now it's going to develop into a hurricane and it's going to miss all of these states. Go right back on out to the Atlantic. Alrighty then. Don't know what to say anymore, guys. I just don't know what to say. Um, that we can't get through to people. That, A, uh, there doesn't seem to be... Well, what we used to remember, you know, uh, what hurricanes used to look like, they just don't... Mm, they seem to have a very different appearance. Now, I was trying to do some research on that sawtooth, on that sawtooth frequency, because I have been seeing that on a regular basis, and I just want to bring your attention to the fact that, yes, information, they are disappearing information. So, sawtooth, right? Okay. Tried to find it, but, oh, this site can't be reached. Mm, okie dokie. Well, uh, let's try a download of it. And. Oh, file not found. Alright, I'm experiencing this over and over again, guys. They truly are disappearing information. You know, I tried Scalar. Uh, this document oh that's not what I got the last time why am I getting this now I do not know we're sorry but your computer or network may be sending automated queries. Too bad. We can't process your request right now. You know, and it, 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 trying to find information on YouTube, wow. That's getting really weird. It's getting very weird. I have put in so many different searches. Uh, weather, severe weather, severe storms, storms, flash flooding, flooding. And I cannot believe that I can't find hardly anything. And here, U.S. weather, I just put in the general U.S. weather and filtered it for today. And you would think I would get an awful lot of mainstream media, uh, mainstream media. posting on weather. 
Well, I got Tampa Bay Fox, direct weather. I don't know what that is. And then it goes to Mumbai, uh, India. And this is the search result. India monsoon. Well, it's monsoon time for Arizona. Why am I getting all of these for U.S. weather? Hmm. Well, and then it just goes on to all of these different countries. Uh, something's very wrong here. But this is essentially what I'm getting when I'm, I'm looking to see what has happened. Google even. Now, I will come up with all of these watches and warnings in many states, and I can't find any information. I can't find any information. Now, there are a lot of people who have been, you know, how are they using radar out in the water, Carol? You talk about the high frequency heating, now, which no doubt is going on right now. So let me show you. Let's go to College of DuPage. Ah, yes, high frequency heating of, well, doesn't that look quite different than what I just showed you it looking like on radar? This is the high frequency heating, uh, which they can heat the atmosphere. Uh, they can emit very powerful high frequencies into the ionosphere, which pushes the ionosphere up. And when they let go, it comes right on down as an extremely low frequency. They can uh, modify, manipulate, intensify weather they can yes they can create weather tired of seeing comments they can't create weather oh they can create weather um but you know i've taken so many captures of radar and satellite i don't know why i do what i do but i do it Yes, an awful lot of high frequency heating. But let's take a look at the uh, College of DuPage's radar. Ah, wow. They don't have radar out there, Carol, of course. They're not, you're not gonna be able to see it. We have radar now that is far more powerful and extends longer but, um, yeah, it's not on radar. It's, you know, this is it. In Truth by Grace, I'll never forget her saying they can play around with satellite, but they can't play around with the radar sites play around meaning they can make it look like you got something there but radar they can't I don't know I've never looked into that but uh, at having uh, looked at radar and satellite for a long period of time the difference is well it appears that she may be right um, I do want you to notice the sustained, extremely low frequencies being set off in Tennessee into North Carolina and from South Carolina into North Carolina. North Carolina, you should be very upset at Tennessee and South Carolina for doing this to you, you guys, in Western North Carolina. Sustained, extremely low frequencies. They've been sustained for a while. The reason why I am bringing your attention to these extremely low frequencies is because you've had earthquakes in this area, which I will get to 
after I go through just a little bit of uh, what's going on here. So uh, I come across this. This is AccuWeather. California's largest wildfire in 2019 is visible from space. Carol, there is no space. Oh, okay. Eight earthquakes strike North Carolina. Umberto strengthens. And summer-like heat, humidity, to persist across the South this week. Great. Okay. Uh, I didn't know about those fires. I didn't know about those fires. Did you know about the fires? California's largest wildfire in 2019, visible uh, 53,186 acres, 67% contained. Murdoch Crossing and Stony areas are still under mandatory evacuation. On orders from the Plumas County Sheriff, though, all other areas previously under mandatory evacuation have been reduced to an advisory evacuation level. I didn't even know about this fire. All right. Um, I want to, well, bring your attention also to a fire in Colorado, uh, Park County, Colorado, two wildfires, evacuation orders in place for about 25 homes for one of them. And, uh, well, the fire was started by two men target shooting with rifles. I have to wonder, but they do say that the men called immediately to say that the fire started. Um, and so there's another fire burning near Red Feather Lakes in Larimar County, Larimer. Um, started as of 5.15 p.m., 7% contained and they've cut the power as a precaution, as a precaution. I guess that's what, that's the new normal, right? All right. Uh, the first wildfire is burning near Bailey. I don't know if I've said that, but here is a fire map. Insaweb, <clears throat> well, it seems to be that you guys in the West <laughs> have quite a lot of fires going and well a lot of fires once again in uh, Northern California um, and you just click on the icons wildfire updated five hours ago 280 acres ramshorn um, 100% contained. Middle fire, 575 acres. Four thousand nine hundred and twenty acres contained. Thirty percent. South fire. Uh, How do I get more information on this? Well, there is a way because I did, let's see. Ah, scroll down, Carol. Good. Shasta Trinity National Forest. 20% con contained. Um, Thirty percent contained. Estimated containment October first. Full containment. And well, I don't know if they would. Uh, document evacuations. My hunch is they would, but 
Yeah, there's a lot in Washington and Oregon and and in areas where I have subscribers. So you might want to check out this site. It's prescribed fire. Um, well, I'm glad most of these are somewhat contained except for this one. Is this Rika? Eureka? No, it's not Eureka, but the Lyme and Kidder two fires started by lightning September 5. Lyme fire located 10 miles southwest of Fort Jones in the Marble Mountain Wilderness. Okay. I look at this and I can't help but think about all of the all of the uh, happy camp shit I'm sorry I have a subscriber there you're in the good range okay hmm that doesn't make me feel comfortable at all. I'm sure it doesn't make her feel comfortable at all. Well, that's a fire I'm going to be watching. All right, guys. So, yeah, I would um, bookmark this site and look at all of these fires out west. Boom, you get the fires boom you get the flooding Jesus um, all right so we also had eight earthquakes in North Carolina near two near Greensboro uh, which is quite a populated area am I right my North Carolinian subscribers and the others were near Cherokee, North Carolina. You want to know where Cherokee is? That's where Cherokee is. Right here. Uh, just so happens to be right on that border of Tennessee. So it's getting hit with sustained, extremely low frequencies from, well, you're cornered. We got you cornered. This was uh, earlier this morning. But let's go back because the dates on the earthquakes are here. They start on the 9th and then September 11th, you got three then on the 12th, then on the 13th, and you know what? They're, uh, they're quite shallow, which is an indication that it was induced. 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 Did I, did I say that? Did I say that clearly? Earthquake weapon, 2025 technology abstract, ultrasonic or acoustic weapons and that is what you are looking at ultrasonic and acoustic weapons all right let me bring up um, let's go let's go to the sixth and I'm gonna try and get through this really fast all right let's start at seven o'clock in the morning on the 6th. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Ah, uh, pretty powerful. Uh, frequency is extremely low. Frequency is belting away in this area. All right. How about at 948? Oh, wow. Still belting away. Oof. And a huge pulse coming out of South Carolina. And at six o'clock, ah, uh, okay, you get a reprieve. This is the sixth at 6 p.m. And this is the, the sixth at 11, 03, 04 p.m. And you're still getting uh, belted with extremely low frequencies out of South Carolina. And how about on the 7th at 2 a.m.? Well, you have an awful lot of extremely low frequencies being blasted away uh, from Georgia on up to North Carolina. But there you go, Spartanburg. Spartanburg always gets the worm. No, wait, Spartanburg absolutely is sending you extremely low frequencies. And the seventh, later on at night, there you go, pulsating away, extremely low frequencies. I know, I just wanted you to see it more clearly, so. Uh, I go to College of DuPage. Well, you saw it. You're going to take my word for it. How about the 8th? The 8th at 2.48 a.m. Wow, sustained coming out of Tennessee, Spartanburg, pulsating away. You see the pulsating frequencies within the sustained frequencies and wow South Carolina man you sure are proving your stuff sending very dangerous frequencies out into the Atlantic into uh, North Carolina into Florida all right here let's go to how about the ninth it is 12 42 a.m sustained sustained extremely low frequencies my god and you had so many earthquakes right so you want to know where cherokee is cherokee is right here right there all right yeah you've had blasting away extremely low frequencies this is 2 35 a.m on the 9th look at this extremely low frequency hits right in right where cherokee is Now, I would have slowed this down if I knew Cherokee was going to be getting an awful lot of her earthquakes so that you would have been able to see it more clearly. Yeah, a lot of strange storms evaporating and my God, look at these frequencies. You know, it's a wonder that any of us are still alive. Look at this. I mean, really, look at that hit from an extremely low frequency. Right where Cherokee is. Well, that's North Carolina doing it to North Carolina. So don't blame Tennessee or South Carolina. And it just goes on. You know, the 10th. The 10th at 324 a.m. Again, you did see them, right? 
Yeah, right here. And you have another frequency that's crossing these, the, 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 the frequencies are crossing one another, which, well, that is very dangerous. How about, how about the 11th at 357? Still, very intense frequencies, Tennessee, South Carolina. So is it really a surprise that you would have had earthquakes, eight of them, North Carolina? Really? Well, it's not. And I can show you even more, but, you know, I just go on, right? Earthquake weapon, ultrasonic acoustic weapons, extremely low frequencies. And, of course, we have the high power, extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere, which can cause earthquakes, cyclones, localized heating. The high frequency heating, Doppler radar pushing up that ionosphere, and then boom, comes down as an extremely low frequency. So, um, you guys, wherever you are, Ohio, thousands without power following Friday storms. So I finally come across, okay, very powerful storms knocking out power. To, well, 6,000 people are still without power in Ohio. And, uh, well, communities rally together in wake of storm damage. Now, when I see what's going on, what looks like, okay, severe weather happening in a state, and then I go look for the information, and I can't find anything, and after a long period of time, I finally come up with Communities rally together in wake of storm damage. Many, Many power crews, crews are, are still working, working around the clock to restore power to thousands of homes in places, places like, like Cleveland, Cleveland Heights, Shaker, Shaker Heights, and Lyndhurst. After Friday night's powerful storms plowed through parts of our area, leaving behind many dozens of trees uprooted, like this one in Lyndhurst that ripped down power lines, knocking out the electricity to the entire neighborhood. Falling trees crushed half a dozen cars on Colbridge Road in Cleveland Heights. Lindhurst resident John Supple and his family spent part of this weekend in the dark until he and a friend hooked up generators. He also ran a line to power his neighbor's home here on Croydon Road. He said he'll shut off the generator Sunday evening so he doesn't disturb those without power overnight. I'm helping out my neighbors because they don't have power and you're just going to lose all that food. Uh, just trying to do a neighborly thing. Within seconds, there was a flash, and then my wife looked out the window, she said, where's the tree? It's disappeared. The couple who lives in their house on Brainerd Road told me they feel fortunate. They're okay. It's all about trees coming down. And did you notice how unhealthy the trees are? This is a hollow trunk. Minnesota flash flooding. All right. I will link below to everything, you know. Sorry. But, um, yeah, a lot of damage. And the storms, you know, the, the warnings and the watches that I come across on the National Weather Service page well, an awful lot of warnings and watches for Wisconsin and Michigan. Oh, Iowa. This was a couple of days ago. But uh, La Crosse had an awful lot. And I know that you got flooding up in Minnesota. I have to rely on you guys to let us know.
we all have to rely on one another to let us know what is happening in your area. Because I, look, you know that I've posted for many years on the damage related to these storms that I can't come across any information that suddenly YouTube is showing me uh, videos when I specifically, because just putting in weather or flash flooding, look, YouTube, the internet knows where I live. I wouldn't be asking for India, though I'm concerned about what happens in India, I'm not saying that, but it always gave me U.S. news. Now, what am I getting? All right, guys. I hope you are all well. I hope you had a great weekend. Yeah. Stay safe, everybody. All links are below.